Are you ready for our next adventure? Let's head over to Furniture Fairy Falls in Pichapelago and see where the fairies are sprinkling their magic this week. Tales of the Furniture Fairies Fairy Flight Adventures Part 1 Choo Choo Chattanooga And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Hebrews 13, 16. Chapter 2. Desk, Drawer, and Door Doctor. In our last episode, her voice trailed off as she flew down the hall. Wait! Zack shouted. The door stick! But it was too late, because the next thing they heard was a cry from Ruby. The door stuck! So with a wink and a nod and a wish-wash-whoosh, Bloom and Zack raced to the bathroom where Ruby was trapped. The door seems to be stuck at the top, Bloom assessed. Let's put some pressure on the doorknob to release it. They pressed down and were able to get the door open for Ruby. Wow, said Ruby. That's scary. I know, said Zack. When people come over to visit, I can't let them use this one. They might get trapped. And they all laughed. After the door was open, Bloom was able to assess the situation and said, It seems the door was hung incorrectly, but let me show you how to fix it. The first thing to do when having problems with doors is assess the situation. You can see on the right, it's wider than it is on the left. You can see how tight it is right there as it comes down the seam. So that tells you a lot about what's going on with the hinges. And then there are also other circumstances, which we're gonna get into in a minute. You can see the distance uh, between the door is not consistent all the way around. And this particular door actually was hung incorrectly altogether. Notice the distance between the jam and the door as you go down. It started out wide at the top, it gets skinnier at the bottom. So this required us to do hinges as well as some sanding. You can see where the door is hitting up against the jam every time that it closes. It's got issues here. You can see how tight it's been, but also over here, there was paint that was on the top that was adding to that distance. There was drips coming down. It was quite a mess. Now this right here, it's called an air shim, and this is a lifesaver. It pumps up air, so it sets the height of the door at the correct place, so you can go in and adjust screws on the hinges without needing another person. Now, the bottom screw was actually stripped, and if you've ever dealt with a stripped screw, you know it's very difficult to get it out. Applying pressure backwards or sometimes to the side will allow the screw to have enough bite to be able to extract it. After that, you want to fill in the hole with something, maybe a chopstick, maybe you've got some toothpicks or a golf tee. You can put those in there because we need to fill that hole with something that the screw can actually bite into. I used shards of wood that I had to put in there, pushed it in with the screwdriver, and then I was able to get enough bite on the screw to fix the hinge. After tightening the screws, then it was time to let the air out of the air shim. Next up is trying to deal with the fact that the door and the door frame are not square. So I'm scribing a line across here where I'm going to be sanding down not only part of the door frame, but part of the door. And just in case you don't have a flat sanding block, I'm gonna show you how to make one. The sanding block worked well on the additional paint on top of the door that was preventing the door from closing. The door jam, on the other hand, needed some additional work. So we got the oscillating tool and added the sanding attachment to get a more aggressive but still flat surface. It wasn't a perfect solution, but the door closed securely with no gaps 
and no fear of anyone getting stuck. Wow, thank you so much. Would it be too much to ask you to look at these other doors I'm having problems with too? Zach asked sheepishly. No problem, said Bloom. That's what we're here for. Show us the way, chattered Ruby. We learned from our last door we have to come in and assess the situation. We can see that the gap at the top is much wider than the one at the bottom. It narrows down till it's almost touching. When we listen to the door when it opens, we can see that it's not only rubbing, but it's hitting the edge, requiring us to force the door closed. Now, as suspected, the screws are loose, so we need the air shim to elevate the door back to a square position. So we can tighten the screws and put the door back in alignment and see if any other repairs are necessary to get the door so it's straight and closes properly. Now this is the moment of truth where we're going to remove the air shim and try to close the door. And we can see that it closes with much less effort, although we still have that metallic sound. Let's check that out. That is not going to be a quick fix, but we'll have to improvise. So here's where we go outside and start to assess the situation on this screen door, which was a very perplexing situation. <laughs> the screen is not attached, which is actually a simple fix, but noticing the way it's laying and that the hinge on top, but the one in the middle is not even connected was a little odd. As I come down, I look and notice that the hinge is separated and inside the door track, but you can also see there was another hinge previously above. So I took the air shim and propped it up to check out the situation and tighten the screws at the top. But it became more and more perplexing. As I start looking down at what was happening, I moved the door out and was able to reattach part of the screws. But again, you'll see in a minute, this door was a whole new animal. You can see from the top, it's, it's too wide for the actual door frame. It's not connected there at all. It's super tight over there on the left. On the right hand side, it still is wider than the actual door frame. So this door was never able to actually shut flush the way it's supposed to. But they had hinges on it and they took those hinges off. Instead of three hinges, there's only two. And they're in the most peculiar places. Now I'm guessing that the screws stripped out and they decided to move those. You can see a crack in the wood at the top there. So here is where I put the screw in and realized that it was stripped inside there. So I had to try some different methods to get it out. This one was very tricky. It didn't want to come out. The screw was small, so it was just floundering around in there. So I decided to try and put the screws in the top and the bottom to see if tightening that part up would give me a little more opportunity to withdraw the screw from the middle. And you'll see, I went through some interesting ways of trying to get this out. If you've ever dealt with a stripped screw, you saw one in the other part of the video, but this was a little bit different because it's inside there and it doesn't want to come out. It's just spinning. So I'm trying to get the torque. I'm trying using a, a screwdriver that has a magnet off the front, but it will not pull it out. So I try and use the magnet from the underneath of there to see if maybe that will uh, help it come out. I try using the drill to apply pressure to get the screw to bite in. You'll notice I came in at an angle. And then now I'm using one of the staples to try and get a slight edge behind there that might then allow the magnet to work, might allow me to get a fingernail in there or a toothpick or anything. This is where I seriously hopped on the struggle bus because I was working at this for probably a good 15 minutes <laughs> trying everything I could think of to get that to go. And that staple, I put it behind there. I'm pressing to try and get a little, tiny little bit of friction anywhere. And finally, it gave way and I was able to extract it. So the key here is that the screw was too small. That screw, it was already stripped out, so I needed to put a longer screw in so I could bite into the wood 
past the part where it had been stripped. So you can see here, I was able to secure that and at least keep the screen door upright, even though, as I mentioned before, whoever made this screen door didn't do it properly because it didn't fit. Excited with the results, Zach said, This is amazing. It's like you're a door doctor. <laughs> Making everyone laugh again. If you aren't too tired, there is another door that's kind of giving me trouble. It's the drawer door in the kitchen. And <laughs> he giggled at his tongue twister. Let's do it, Bloom, cheered Ruby. Lead the way, Bloom said, and the three headed off to fix the drawer door. Now we can call you the Drawer Door Doctor, Ruby squealed, pointing at the kitchen drawer. They all laughed again. Well, since we seem to be on the D theme, there is one more thing that needs a repair, and that's the desk, said Zach as they all giggled. Yay, said Ruby. Perfect, Bloom replied. On to the desk. Okay, now we'll call you the desk drawer and door doctor. Zach exclaimed, and they all <laughs> burst out laughing. Woo! We've managed to fix a lot of things today, Ruby said as she wiped the sweat on her forehead. We're just warming up, Bloom said with a giggle. We, we are? The two asked in unison, looking shocked. Yes, we are, Bloom said. 
And with a wink and a nod and a wish wash whoosh, tune into the next episode to find out what new tales the fairies have to tell. Follow us for more adventures on our social channels at Furniture Fairy HQ. And help support the You Are Enough Global Initiative by checking out our Amazon store in the link below. Until next time, remember, you are enough just the way you are. Remember to do a fairy a favor and like and subscribe.